ladies and gentlemen, we are now on our very first video notes for chapter four, and we're going to be looking at lesson one, the Sumerians and geography. Remember that these video notes are due tomorrow, Friday, September 20th. Now, it's important for us to understand both the geography of this place because we know that geography shapes how people live and to start talking about our first group in Mesopotamia, the Sumerians. And they made important advances in areas such as farming and writing that laid the foundation for future uh, civilizations, including our own. So it's very exciting to see kind of what we have in store here. Now, Let's take a look at this larger map of our Eastern Hemisphere. Now, in class, we did some map labeling. It's important to know that the area of Mesopotamia that we're looking at is right about here on this larger map. So we've got Africa down here, we've got Europe up here, and Asia up here. And we are right in Mesopotamia where everything kind of collides together. Now, if you didn't get a chance in class to go over the labels on the map, I wanted you to take a look here. Please take a moment and double check to make sure you have your map labeled correctly. We've got our blue continent of Africa shaded in down here and make sure your key is shaded in as well. We've got our red lightly shaded here and all the way up here for our continent of Asia. And then we've got our fertile crescent, that area shaped like a crescent, all filled in with green. Take a moment right now, pause the video, and please make sure that all of the work you did in class is accurate and matches up with the labels that I have here. Okay, all the way from the Tigris River on the top of the two rivers, T for Tigris, T for top, and the Euphrates River, U for Euphrates, U for underneath, all the way over to Egypt and the Nile and Asia Minor and Syria and all those labels. And look for those bunny ears for the Red Sea. Pause now and I'll see you in just a minute. Now, when we look at our first civilizations of Mesopotamia, we know that geography plays a huge role. I want you to think about this hot question. Why might the earliest settlers in Mesopotamia have decided to settle in the area between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers? So think about what you know about growing plants and why settling between two rivers might be a good idea. I want you to predict two benefits or positives and two drawbacks or negatives to settling in such an area. You could do a T-chart, you could write this out and list it, it's up to you. But tell for me why those good things and bad things might be the case when you settle in between two rivers. As we talked about in class, Mesopotamia is the land between the two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. By Tigris, I want you to write the word top. And Euphrates, I want you to write under. People always get the two rivers confused, but here's our Tigris at the top and our Euphrates underneath. And Mesopotamia is all of this land in between these two rivers. Now, we've got the land in between the rivers, but the rivers don't just affect the area right there. We also have our larger fertile crescent. This is this curving strip of land, both inside and outside the rivers, that curves around into Egypt from the Mediterranean Sea to the Persian Gulf. Put a star by those bodies of water that the fertile crescent touches. And notice it's that crescent shape, like a crescent moon or a croissant, but also it's fertile. It's good for growing crops. So the name is really kind of like right on the nose, guys. It's pretty self-explanatory. But this area is where we're going to see our earliest civilizations in human history arising. Now, when we look at our early valley dwellers, we're going to look at the back page of, so this will be page eight on your packet now, right up at the top. We see that about 7,000 BC, we see people first settling in Mesopotamia. So right at the end of the Neolithic and the beginning of the Bronze Age. 
So we have this green area right here, right between those two rivers right there. By about 4000 BC, some groups began building farming villages there. So we go from just small settlement to some larger farming villages. By about 3000 BC though, we have civilizations developing in Sumer or Southern Mesopotamia right here, right near the Persian Gulf so they could get out to trade and where you get the most fertile soil from those two rivers. Now on the map you have, I want you to draw in that there are mountains up here and these are called the Zagros Mountains. And down here, I want you to circle where it says Arabian Desert. So on either side, we have things kind of trapping us in and making it so that Fertile Crescent can't spread. So we keep everyone right in the middle. But that also means that the rivers don't have as much space to spread out as you think. So on our next section, Taming the Rivers, we're gonna talk about why that might be difficult. In the summertime, we need to know that rivers are unpredictable. The Tigris and Euphrates, circle that word unpredictable. In the summertime, little to no rain falls. So the rivers are very low and farmers didn't have enough water to plant the crops in the fall. This is a major problem. It leads to something called drought. But in the spring, the opposite happens. Rains and melting snow from the northern mountains caused rivers to overflow, leading to these unexpected and violent floods. So now we have some seasons that are very, very dry and some seasons that are too wet. There's no middle ground. So what do we do? The benefits of the floods is that they brought silt or small particles of fertile soil and left it behind when the flooding was done. So we didn't want to stop the flooding entirely. Make sure you circle that word silt. That's an important vocabulary word there. So we need that fertile soil from the floods. We don't want to just get rid of the floods or move somewhere where there aren't floods. So what we do is we start to build dams and canals to let the water flow into our fields. We are going to control the flooding and we're gonna learn more about that in class. This is called irrigation, important vocab word, irrigation. We want to bring the water to us and control it, but also store it for when we don't have enough, okay? We're gonna make sure that we have the resources we need when we need them and how we need them. So take a look at our last timeline and I want you to write in this heading, City States Arise. You can write it in right here, right above the little timeline, okay? So this is how we go from these little farming villages to bigger civilizations. First, we have silt, that fertile soil that lets farmers grow a surplus or extra amount of crops. We learned that word surplus in our last video or in our last chapter and we're gonna see it used again and again. This led to people who didn't need to farm becoming artisans or skilled workers. There's that specialization of labor that we've talked about, whether it's pottery, weaving, whatever the case may be. Now we don't have to spend all day farming, we can practice different trades and get money for that and feed ourselves that way. As this happened, people began to live in places together that helped us to have lots of trade and those little farming villages moved into cities. By 3000 BC, we see several coming up in Sumer in Southern Mesopotamia. We call these people Sumerians. And in our next video notes, we're gonna learn a little bit more about Sumer civilization, but today we wanted just the basics. So please make sure your map is accurate and be ready to come in tomorrow and have a lot of fun figuring out how geography can affect those early Sumerians in the Tigris and Euphrates River Valley in the Fertile Crescent in Mesopotamia, the land between the rivers. Hold tight guys, because I know that we've talked about Mesopotato today and I want to see if you want to see him guys. All right, so have a great day. Keep an eye out for Mesopotato and we'll talk soon.